Good morning. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Welcome to Trinity Lutheran Church in Pembroke Pines and our Easter morning live stream service. I'd invite you on, if you check on Facebook and you're watching this on Facebook, we have posted the bulletin on both the Trinity Lutheran Facebook page and my own. So we invite you, if you wish, to go ahead and print out that bulletin so you'll be able to follow along or you can pull that up on another device. If you are following along, we invite you to get a glass or cup or bowl of water that we'll be using a little later on in the service. I invite you, once you get your cup or bowl of water, to just sit and begin this Easter celebration. Let us just take a deep breath in. Let us open ourselves, our body, our hearts, our minds, and our spirits to the very love of the resurrected Christ who greets us this morning. We begin then with our opening hymn. Shining out. 
Glory and honor, dominion and power be to God forever and ever. Christ is risen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. gave your only Son to suffer death on the cross for our redemption, and by his glorious resurrection you delivered us from the power of death. They make us die every day to sin, that we may live with him forever in the joy of the resurrection, through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen.
So this is the moment, if you haven't had an opportunity to get a glass or bowl of water, to go do so. For on this, the most holy of days, it has long been the tradition of churches throughout the world to receive new members through baptism, and for those who have been baptized, to reaffirm their baptismal promises. My friends in Christ, in holy baptism, our Lord Jesus received us and made us members of his church. In the community of God's people, you have learned from God's word, God's loving purpose for you and for all creation. You have been nourished at God's holy table and called to be witnesses to the gospel of Jesus Christ. Now, therefore, I ask you to profess your faith in Christ Jesus, to reject sin, and confess the faith of the church, the faith in which we baptize. Do you renounce all the forces of evil, the devil, and all his empty promises? If so, please respond, I do. And do you believe in God the Father? I believe in God the Father Almighty creator of heaven and earth. And do you believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God? I believe in one Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. And do you believe in God, the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and my life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray for those affirming their baptism this morning, and for the baptized everywhere that we may be redeemed from all evil and rescued from the way of sin and death. For each of the petitions we, that ends in Lord in your mercy, we invite you to respond, hear our prayer. That the Holy Spirit may open our hearts to your grace and truth, Lord in your mercy. Hear our prayer. That we may be kept in faith and communion of your holy church, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. that we may be sent into the world in witness to your love, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. that we may be brought to the fullness of your peace and glory, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. into your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy, through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. My friends, you've made public confession of your faith. Do you intend to continue in the covenant God made with you in holy baptism, to live among God's faithful people, to proclaim the good news of God in Christ through word and deed, to serve all people, following the example of our Lord Jesus, and to strive for justice and peace in all the earth? If so, please respond, I do. And I ask God to help and guide me. I do. And I ask God to help and guide me. Gracious Lord, as well, let me preface that. So in the remembrance of baptism with sprinkling, as I pray, we invite you then to take a glass or cup or, or bowl of water. And in remembrance of your baptism, to make the sign of the cross, or even, even to sprinkle yourself or sprinkle those around you. As the waters touch you, be reminded that especially on this Easter morning, that in and through baptism, Christ has claimed us eternally for the kingdom of God. We pray, gracious Lord, through water and the Spirit, you have made us your own. You forgave us all our sins and brought us into newness of life. 
continue to strengthen us in your Holy Spirit and daily increase in us the gifts of grace, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord, the spirit of joy in your presence. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. Amen. Amen.
after the Sabbath, as the first day of the week was drawing, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to see the tomb. And suddenly there was a great earthquake, for an angel of the Lord descended from heaven, came and rolled back the stone and sat upon it. His appearance was like lightning, and his clothing was as white as snow. For fear of him, the guards shook and became like dead men. But the angel said to the women, Do not be afraid. I know that you are looking for Jesus who was crucified. He is not here, for he has been raised. Come, see the place where he lay, then go quickly and tell his disciples. He has been raised from the dead, and indeed he is going ahead of you to Galilee. There you will see him. This is my message for you. So they left the tomb quickly with fear and great joy, and ran to tell the disciples. Suddenly Jesus met them and said, Greetings! And they came to him and took hold of his feet, and they worshipped him. Then Jesus said to them, Do not be afraid. Go and tell my brothers to go to Galilee. There they will see me. Here ends the reading. Grace, peace, and mercy be unto you from God our Father and his Son, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. So this is the strangest of Easter mornings that I can recall. And I can recall quite a few Easter mornings. In Matthew's Gospel, when we last saw the disciples, it was the Garden of Gethsemane. Soldiers had come. An ear was cut off of a slave of the chief priest, and Jesus healed. The disciples scattered to the winds, and Jesus was taken prisoner. We have a little more of the story of Peter, for when Jesus was taken to the, the house of Caiaphas, he waited outside in the garden, and people heard his accent, and they connected him with Jesus. And Peter would go on to deny that he knew Jesus three times until his heart was torn. And broken. There the disciples leave the story for some time, at least the twelve. There are other disciples who continue on in the story, and we meet several of them at the cross of Jesus on Good Friday. The apostles, the twelve that were with Jesus throughout his entire ministry, are not present in Matthew's telling of the story at the cross. The women are present. They are there to bear witness to Christ's death. The soldiers are there, for they still have roles to play in the death of Jesus. There are, in Matthew's Gospel, two others with Jesus, one on his left and one on his right. And in Matthew's telling, both of them are insulting Jesus and mocking him. In Matthew's telling, none of those crucified with Jesus do anything more than insult him. One more person appears on the stage, and that is Joseph of Arimathea, who takes the body of Jesus after he dies, takes to his own tomb, new, we are told, never used, 
Joseph rolls the stone in front of the grave and seals it. Then on Easter morning, Mary and the other Mary, they appear. And in Matthew's version, they're not there to anoint the body, but they're to see Jesus. But they know that the stone would be there because they had seen the stone laid across the entrance. It is the women who have been with Jesus, who have borne witness to the story. Not just the resurrection, but his crucifixion and burial. And one wonders, if those details that are shared with us in scriptures would have even been remembered if not for their telling. But here on Easter morning, it is not what they expect. Their hearts are heavy because, as we just said, they have borne witness to the suffering of Christ. They were there minute by minute and hour by hour on Good Friday. Every moan, every breath of suffering, every humiliation and mockery, they saw. And every pain borne by our Lord was both etched in their memory and in their hearts. So they come Easter morning to see, but their expectations have been written by the reality of Christ's death. That reality is death and loss and crushed expectation of what could have been, what they hoped would have been. There is no future one can imagine that they are willing to wrap their minds around for years. The expectation was that Christ was the Messiah. What kind of Messiah, they really didn't understand. Jesus had talked about his suffering and death. And Jesus had talked about all things being made new and the coming of God's kingdom. But on the cross, all of that in a moment was wiped away and the future that they were trying to wrap their minds around vanished like smoke. They came that Easter morning to see. But what did they see? An earthquake and the stone rolled away and the guards that had been posted by the Jewish leadership stunned into silence on the ground. And angelic beings there pronouncing for them the impossible, that Christ was risen. You know, Easter has over the years been something that we prepare ourselves for. We have a history in our minds of what Easter should be. We, we get the, the, po the, not the point set, is oh goodness, we get the <laughs> Easter lilies. See, it's a confusing morning. We get the lilies and the candles and, and people tend to, to dress up in, in, in their Easter clothes. And there, there are all of these sort of things in our mind, this checklist of things that we have to do to prepare for Easter. And Easter is a, is a morning of joy and of singing and of praising and of alleluias. But the scripture describes Easter much differently. 
in the, woven in the story of Easter, in the praise, in the women holding on to the feet of Jesus and worshiping him, is an unsettling story, a confusing story, uh, even a frightening story, because the expectations of what happens when people meet the power of resurrection in their lives just shatters everything. Maybe this Easter we draw a little closer to that first Easter. Maybe this morning for you is a little unsettling, a little confusing, maybe even a little frightening. Maybe the traditions that have been woven into your practices for Easter morning have gone by the side or had to have been modified. But maybe we could allow ourselves this morning to imagine like the women who come to the tomb. What happens when human beings encounter the resurrection and all that begins to unfold in the truth of that statement? What happens when we encounter resurrection It's joy and it's confusion and it's unsettling and it's unfathomable and it comes to us in, in colors and sound and noise. And it almost is beyond description. Resurrection. Easter has been described as God's greatest act of love. It is God's greatest act of love. That's what a, a pastor and writer Elizabeth Johnson says. She says it's God's greatest act of love because Jesus hasn't been abandoned to the grave and we have not been abandoned to sin and death. The, the, the women coming to the tomb have not been abandoned to a life of disappointment and suffering. The disciples haven't been abandoned to their fear. It is God's greatest act of love instead of being abandoned to what we imagine our present reality to be. God responds in love. Perhaps now more than ever, our present realities need to be confronted with the power of God's love that continues to enfold through the resurrection of Jesus that is a present force in our lives and in the world that continues to unfold through 2,000 years ongoing, <clears throat> making all things new. Making all things new. Easter is God's greatest act of love for us. And in this most unsettling of mornings, when our Easter is not what we, a month ago, ever dreamed it would be, and our future, and the days and weeks and even months ahead have yet to be written, and we cannot even begin to imagine the story that the 
that the world is seeking to write and it's a story of fear and it's a story of disappointment and it's a story that shakes us to our core. And yet God's response to that story that the world is seeking to write for us and God's response to the fear is love. For I am with you always, Jesus will soon tell the disciples, to the end of the age. This day and the days to come will be made new because of the power of God's love to sustain and strengthen us. Thanks be to God. Amen. second half of our prayers for the day. Again, please respond to hear us, O God, with your mercy is great. Trusting God's promise of new life, we pray for the renewal of the church, the world, and all creation. Alleluia! God, you are resurrection. Bring joy to your church as we spread the good news that Jesus Christ is risen. Lead us to proclaim this message with persistence and confidence. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Alleluia. God, you are creator. Open our eyes to the first few, 
fruits of new life around us, to budding trees and nourishing rains and warm breezes, to tilled soil, inspire our gratitude, renew our commitment to the stewardship of the earth. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Alleluia. God, you are resurrection. You show no partiality among the nations, but instead call all people to the way of peace. Bring an end to conflict and division wherever they are found. Renew leaders and advocates for peace with a commitment to the common good. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Alleluia. God, you are strength. Awaken hope and perseverance in all who need to hear a word of life this day. Those who are fearful, hungry, anxious, oppressed, despairing, suffering from the physical, mental, spiritual, or economic impacts of coronavirus, or sick from other causes. We pray this morning, Lord, for God to have mercy on us, for Alan and all in long-term care, for Kristen and Chuck as they prepare for their move, for those trying to file for unemployment, for those fighting addiction, homelessness, mental health issues, and dangerous and destructive lifestyles, for Kathleen May, for his wife's family in the Philippines, for Ed and Zilla, Uncle Sid, Jim, Barbara, Michelle, Ashley and Elizabeth and Cindy, for Randall, Kim, Laurie and Nicole's husband, for the friends and family of Giuseppe and the friends and family of Spider, for friends and family of Francie Sue, for Mickey and Bill H, Sandy and Jim and Jen Kopeck, for the O'Neill, Davika and Richard, for Claire, Marjorie and Tendale, for Dan, for Grant, Stuart, Payne, and Blackston families, for the Gerhardt, Noonan, Bucci, Kaziras, Dawson, Monson, and Schaffner and Coterie families, for the Salisbury, Cooper, Hill, Hannah families, for the Strada families, for the Andre Jabu family, for the Campbell family who lost their dad yesterday, for families who are grieving due to COVID-19 and other illnesses, for the McRae family and the Little John family and the Brown family and the Henderson family, for the safety of essential and frontline workers, for peace of mind during this anxiety-filled time, for the Ross family on the loss of their uncle, for Mrs. Wren to get well and Nana Stork, for children and families of the El Centro ministry, for the Anderson, Sevis, and Regis families, Sylvia and daughter as they move to South Florida, for Mom, Lorna, Roxy, and Renee, for thankfulness for the improvement in Dennis's health, for thankfulness that Kalma shows no sign of this disease, for Elijah for health issues, for all who are affected by the changes brought on by coronavirus. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Alleluia, God, you are life. We give you thanks for all the baptized who by water and your word are forever joined to Christ's death and resurrection. Embolden all who share this baptized life and renew us in faith and action. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. We commend these and all our prayers to you, O God. Come near to us with your saving help. For the sake of Jesus Christ, our risen Lord.
spiritual communion is an ardent desire to receive Jesus in the most holy sacrament and lovingly embracing him. In spiritual communion, we with contrite and humble hearts ask our Lord to come to us in the same way he would if we were able to receive the sacrament together. I invite you to please repeat after me. My Jesus, my Jesus, I believe that you are present. I believe that you are present in this most holy sacrament. In this most holy sacrament. I love you above all things. I love you above all things. And I desire more than anything. And I desire more than anything. For you to dwell more deeply and abiding within my soul. For you to dwell more deeply and abiding within my soul. Since I cannot at this moment. Since I cannot at this moment. Receive you sacramentally. Receive you sacramentally. Dwell spiritually within my heart. Dwell spiritually within my heart. I embrace you. And unite myself wholly to you. And unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Amen. Following the final hymn, I will go ahead and post the information for our virtual coffee hour that will follow at the noon hour, at 12 o'clock noon, on Zoom. So we will get that up on both the Trinity Facebook and on the, my own Facebook page if you would like to participate in that Zoom virtual coffee hour, which will allow us to see each other and interact face to face. So that will be up following the service. Just give us a few moments now, my friends, please hear the Lord's blessing. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with his favor and give you his peace. Amen. Amen.
Love God and love all.